So what we're looking at today are two painted wooden panels showing the depiction of what's commonly called Jesus presented to the people, and another showing Jesus carrying the cross. Both date from the beginning of the 15th century, and they're two fragments of what would originally have been part of a much larger structure, probably an imposing altarpiece for a church with episodes recounting the Passion Cycle. And the Passion Cycle tells the physical and spiritual suffering of Jesus Christ in his last days on earth. So the episodes in the story of Jesus's life, where he was condemned to death by Pontius Pilate, who then had him whipped and crowned with thorns and presented to the people. And some of the crowd were said to cry out, crucify him, crucify him. And that's what you see in the scrolls in Latin at the bottom of the picture. And, and after the sentence, Jesus carried his cross on which he was to be nailed to Calvary, the hill outside Jerusalem. And in that picture, we see the blood running down his neck from the wounds made by the thorns and that he's enduring further violence. The soldier is set to bludgeon him with the handle of a mace. The features of the figures are animated. As a viewer in the church setting, you'd be encouraged to imagine yourself as part of the crowd. The scenes are painted on wood rather than canvas and we date them to the first quarter of the 15th century because they've got elements that are consistent with other surviving painted examples as well as stained glass. Um, for instance, in the facial types, the forked beards of the figures and the long shape of their faces and the way the wood on the cross is painted as well. Religious pictures from this period are scarce and they vary a lot in style. You can see very evidently both panels are badly damaged the, the top and bottom of both have been roughly sawn and in Jesus presented to the people there are scratches all over in varying depth and thickness and in places where the lines intersect the integrity of the painted surface has been compromised and whole areas of paint have crumbled or flaked away. What's significant about these slash marks and the reason why they're in the exhibition is that they are, in fact, evidence of Protestant iconoclasm. Iconoclasm literally translates as image breaking, but this isn't actually terribly helpful in describing the first wave of iconoclastic acts by Protestants against religious art and artefacts under Henry VIII. That was a sort of state-authorised salvage operation. The monasteries were stripped and essentially shut down. But it was important that symbols of the old Catholic religion were kept intact to be sold in to bring maximum value for the king. So some of the editing that happened at this time is most visible in books. These valuable and useful objects were not completely destroyed but altered. So depictions of popes were defaced and mention of Thomas Beckett's name, the 12th century statesman who was made a saint and referred to such in books. It was ordered by Henry VIII that the word saint was not to appear, and so we have books where the word saint has been removed from the passage, but the rest of the passage is intact. So if we look again at the panels and the scratches, we can perhaps understand the damage a little better. In Jesus carrying the cross, one of the cuts almost decapitates Jesus' head from his body. At the bottom edge of Jesus presented to the people, the person sawing the panel has chopped off the top of another representation of Jesus in another scene from the cycle. However, if this damage was motivated by religious ideology, the faces would almost certainly have been more thoroughly obliterated. Instead, what we see is the most significant areas of both paintings survive. The scenes are recognisable. The panels are also about the same size, about 30 by 30 centimetres, and so it's almost as if they were cut for a specific purpose in mind. If you cut down a painting on wood and turned it round, it was a piece of wood and could be used as a door or a tabletop. And so the, yeah, the true nature could be hidden for centuries, like as was the case with these, these two fragments.